Committee. I'll call the Smith County Board of Supervisor <coughs> monthly meeting to order. And to start us off tonight, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Becky Creasy <coughs> and follow that with the uh, Pastor David Cross of Highlands Fellowship Church with uh, prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we come to you. Lord, before we do anything, God, we just want to thank you. We want to praise you. We want to glorify you. God, we thank you for loving us and caring for us and promise to be our each and every needs. And God, we thank you for your love and your goodness and your mercy, but God, above everything, we thank you for your amazing grace. God, we come to you this evening. Uh, God, just... Uh, First of all, uh, praying for uh, our country. Uh, God, uh, you know what a mess that, that this country is in. But God, we thank you so much for this country. Uh, God, uh, we, we can live in a lot of different places. But God, we, we thank you for the uh, liberty that we have in our, our country. So God, we just lift it up to you. God, we lift this uh, board of supervisors up to you. God, thank you for each and every one. God, we just thank you for the time and the effort that they put in. God, to, to make our, our county a better place to live. Uh, so, God, we uh, we lift up this county. Uh, God, we just we, we just know that you know the very need that, that, that is represented. And, God, just give uh, this board the wisdom and the knowledge of understanding of, God, what, what you would have them to do to, to make this place a, a better place to live. God, I ask your blessings upon the board, upon uh, our people that are here today. God, you know the needs of everyone that's represented in this room today, so we lift those up to you. Uh, God, thank you that you love us and care for us and promise to meet our each and every needs. So God, we thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. So we lift these things up in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everyone. <coughs> All right, we have, uh, I'm not aware of any amendments to the agenda. Do we need to make any? Yes, sir. Okay, moving right along, we have presentations. Someone's doing a resolution in support of the Animal Control, Animal Care and Control Appreciation Week. Yes, sir, I'll read that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a resolution of support for Animal con Care and Control Appreciation Week, whereas the National Animal Care and Control Association, NACA, is committed to setting the standard of professionalism in animal welfare and public safety through training, networking, and advocacy, and whereas animal care and control professionals dedicate their lives to the health and safety of at-risk and helpless animals, and whereas animal care and control professionals work to rescue and protect animals from injury, disease, abuse, and starvation, and whereas NACA has designated the second full week of April as Animal Care and Control Officer Appreciation Week, and whereas federal, state, local officials throughout the nation take this time to recognize, thank, and commend all animal care and control professionals for the dedicated services they perform in fulfilling the commitment to providing the highest and most efficient level of customer service and now therefore the Smith County Board of Supervisors declares the week of April 14th through 20th 2024 to be National Animal Care and Control Appreciation Week in Smith County adopted this 11th day of April 2024 you want <coughs> do I hear a motion to approve so moved, Mr. Chairman. Several motions. Uh, one I want to take as a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. Sounds like that was unanimous. Pictures. Who are we giving it to? Mr. Mr. Chandler's here. Animal control. Animal control. Why don't you go ahead and do it, John? <coughs> no. Animal.
Now that will improve our animal control service, right? Yes. <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> I do believe. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now we have a resolution in support of National Public Safety Communicator Week. He says someone from Animal Control will be here. I don't think that's correct. No, well, that was copy and paste, probably. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> this is a resolution in recognition of the second week of April as National Public Safety Communicator Week. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time to require law enforcement, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of law enforcement officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our law enforcement officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who contact the Smith County Emergency Communication Center, and whereas public safety telecommunicators, also known locally as our dispatchers, are first and most critical, are first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our law enforcement officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators of Smith County have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients in need. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. Now, there, therefore, be it resolved, the Smith County Board of Supervisors declares the week of April 14th through the 20th, 2024, to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Smith County, in order of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our county and citizens safe. Adopted this 11th day of April, 2024. Mm -hmm. okay. You want to put that in the form of a motion? Yes. Okay. Have a second? Thank you. Have a motion and a second to adopt. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed likewise? Sounds like it was unanimous. You gotta come All forward. Scholarships. Mr. Bailey Robinson, come forward. Fill us in. So, good afternoon or good evening. Um, <coughs> as Mr. Adkins introduced me, Bailey Robinson. Um, my name's not too important, though. It's uh, what I'm doing and the work I'm doing. I'm with Smith County 4 H. So, today, along with Ms. Jessis, Ms. Bullington, and Ms. Hilton, are here to address uh, a matter that's really important to us and that's the financial hurdles that are hindering some Smith County students or youth from participating in 4-H camp. We all know that this program camp has a ton of positive outcomes to it and it are invaluable to some people learning, um, growing personally and building essential life skills but unfortunately not every child in this county has the means to do that and as a 4-H agent I've seen this firsthand and heard it firsthand. <clears throat> Almost every in our world, um, the cost of participation has increased, and this year camp is $245, and for most families, um, cost camps and associated fees can prohibit them from participating. 
So that's why I'm standing here today to urge you guys to provide some financial assistance for Smith County youth. By investing in their participation in camp, we're investing in the future of Smith County and giving young individuals a chance to develop their leadership skills, forge lifelong friendships, and develop their full potential. Every child in Smith County deserves this positive experience. I understand there's some budget um, constraints, uh, but I firmly believe an investment like this in the Smith County youth is something that is invaluable. It can't be replaced. Your support in the past, the present, and hopefully continued in the future um, will continue to benefit this county. As I told roughly 400 and something people a couple weeks ago, 4-H isn't, and that was at a public speaking competition of 4-H for third, fourth, and fifth grade. 4-H um, isn't just a short-term buy-in. Okay, yeah, we produce results um, with camps and projects like public speaking and animal science and so, all those things, but it's really a long-term buy-in. Um, these three young ladies here today, they're a long-term buy-in. Um, and I can quote some, some statistics off of that, like they're three times more likely to give back to the community. They're two times more likely to be more physically active. They're two times more likely to advance their education, whether it's college or a, a trade profession. So that's what the long-term buy-in for 4-H is. So I'm going to pass this over to Ms. Justice to take over this next little bit, but I want you guys to hear what they have to say. We'll give you 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't think I need that. All 10 minutes. <laughs> yep. okay. um, this evening, we would like you to please consider allocating financial assistance of any amount for Smith County youth who would otherwise be unable to attend 4-H camp. Your support in the past, present, and future will prove to create positive results for Smith County. Together, we can make a difference in, in the lives of our youth and build a brighter future for our community. Last year, with your help and various other community partners, we were able to offset the cost of camp for 32 yeah. youth. As the board considers providing support for youth, I want you to hear firsthand the impact that 4-H has on youth from Ms. Hilton and Ms. Bolington. Okay, then. I've been doing 4-H since I was in grade 7, and it's always had a huge impact on me as a young lady I have become today. It has helped me with the job I hold and with dealing with any problem that has faced me in any situation. 4-H, um, with the financial situations we have in today's society, it's hard for some families to get so much money to send their kids while they go by living paycheck to paycheck. <coughs> for some kids, 4-H is a time for them to be away from home. Their home life may not be that well, and they may not get a good, hearty meal every single night. 4-H, we provide that. We help them feel safe and at home, and we help them grow as they become older. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Abigail Boynton. My personal experience from 4-H is I've been attending 4-H and other activities for about eight years, and I found 4-H exceptionally beneficial as a person. One of my best memories from 4-H camp is when it was 2018 and I met the best friend that I still have to this day. Um, another great memory of 4-H was last year because it was my first year as a CIT, which is a counselor in training. Though I had the most fantastic week at camp and I had the opportunity to give our campers the best experience as well. When you're at 4-H, you learn things that you necessarily <coughs> wouldn't anywhere else, such as archery, low reps, and various STEM activities for our campers. Going to camp helps me as an individual to break out my comfort zone and to try new things, as well as for our campers. Some of my best friends I have is from meeting them at 4-H. Why should people attend 4-H camp? 4-H camp is a phenomenal way for kids to boost their confidence and to meet new friends. When going to 4-H, you learn basic life skills such as cooking, cleaning, and interacting with unfamiliar faces. At 4 H, we teach our campers to look after themselves. Not every child has parents that teach them these basic principles of taking after themselves. 
that when they come to forage, they can be independent and productive. Lastly, forage camp provides children with the opportunity to make lifelong friendships and unforgettable memories with their youth years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Bailey didn't ask me to speak, but uh, I'm going to speak in favor of it too. As past president of the 4-H Center, board of directors for 20-some years, and still a current member of that board, it's a phenomenal organization, a phenomenal event for a lot of children, not just for Smith County, but right now we're looking for scholarships for Smith County, but the, the whole 4-H Center uh, needs support from our board and from the other boards in the community. But I have a, one son who is, all my kids camped at 4-H, so I've been very supportive of it. I have one son who was camp, uh, who uh, was on the board staff, excuse me, I'll get it here eventually, was on the staff for two years. I have a grandson who was camper of the year, and he's been on the staff now for two years. And uh, I'm just high, highly supportive of 4-H. And we each here on the board have a, a, a little bit of money we can put into charitable organizations or spend as we want to spend it. And I want to put a thousand of my money into the 4-H scholarship program. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. When budgetarily do you need the money? Um, so our first payment usually goes through, I think this year to the center, our first payment will be June 14th. June 14th. And, so and when is our second payment is usually to them um, a month after our camp. And this year we're camping July 1st through 5th. Okay. You're camping July 1st through 5th? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me see what I've got left over. You can have, because I know I've spent a lot actually for 4-H for the fourth grade. I used and bought a lot new so for the livestock and things mm -hmm. this year. So uh, well, we, I, we I, I don't know that. how much if I have any left, but whatever I have, you can, you're welcome to it. Thank you. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hey, Bailey. Yes, Do you know what kind of needs you have this year? I know you said that uh, last year it was 32. Um, so currently we'll take scholarship applications until roughly June. Um, right now, I have counted 17. So usually you get the, the full sprint of people those last couple of weeks before camp registration. And Bailey, I'm proud to say I'm a former 4-H camper and also attendee to 4-H Congress at Virginia Tech. So, and let me say to the board that 4-H greatly enhances the instructional program in Smith County Schools with a lot of programs. They work with our science teachers. I helped them judge Science Fair Project Friday. I mean, public speaking. Public speaking. Uh, and <clears throat> they really do a fantastic job with our youth. And, and this young man here does an outstanding job. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. I, I have a quick question. You said you have 17 that potentially are in need of scholarships. How many total do you that attends on an annual basis? So we are currently rebuilding. COVID knocked down numbers way down. Last year we had 127 kids attend. From um, Smith County? Yes, yeah. So wow. we'll, we'll just take Smith County kids unless there's a special circumstance where kids recently moved out of the county and all their friends and I guess classmates would be attending camp. Um, that way they're not just thrown into the wolves at a camp somewhere else. Um, so it'll just be Smith County kids. Maximum number is uh, I think maximum number is 215. Yep. And then we typically take anywhere from 20 to 30 something teens and CITs to help run camp. So, and these three are, are part of that number. Okay, thank you. Yep. You're welcome. I got a question. Mr. Just a second, Mr. Um, is there a certain amount for that, that you know of? Did I miss it or do you know? For this year? For, yeah. So this year we've got 17 <coughs> current applications yeah. that that have been submitted. But you'll likely have more. We will likely have more. Last how, year we had 32. How much is a monthly? How much does it cost for each one? Oh, for, for our week it'd be 245. So last oh, year it was $7,840. So far this year with the 17, you're at 4162 40, technically. Yep. Unless somebody else has added. And, and we, we do ask other community members to help us with that as well. I, I would just like to make a suggestion that if, if we can wait until we know for sure the numbers for what that amount would be, uh, the supplemental appropriations, would that be sufficient to 
pull back. We can do that, yeah. Um, if, if you want to, to cover all those, I'm, if I, you, I think we need to. I'm hearing a lot of support. Maybe it would be um, good if, if the board wants to authorize us to cover the cost of the scholarships. What's the gap of the scholarship request out of the supplemental appropriations? That way we wouldn't have to worry about coming back and trying to make sure that we, we meet all the deadlines for 4-H. Everybody feel the same way? Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. We see nothing head nods. I mean, y'all don't realize, uh, having been down there and seen some of these kids, these scholarships means a lot to some of these kids. <clears throat> uh, parents couldn't afford it. I know it. I know it sounds cheap, you know, $245 for food for five days and it, everything. I mean, a summer sports camp would be five or six hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these, not all of them, but a lot of these, the ones he's talking about, they would never be able to participate in a, in a sports camp. Mm -hmm. This is their one chance to get away on their own and grow up a little bit. Yeah. Do, we need, do we need any kind of motion to do this? If you want to, that'd be great. Okay. I'll make that motion that we uh, pay for the needs of scholarships out of our supplemental appropriations. I guess the gap that the community doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, thank you for the presentation. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. Bailey, time will spend. Yeah. Just thank you all so much. Stay in touch with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you all so much. That means a lot to us. Thank you, girls. We appreciate it. Next, Ms. Kendra Hayden is going to give an economic development update. You got a hard act to follow. I know. <laughs> Can't stop it. since I've been in front of you guys for an economic development update, so I thought I would catch you guys up on some of the things that I've been up to and some of the things that we're planning on. Um, just a brief overview of some of the stuff, recent wins, the value of some of the things that have happened lately, um, some of our marketing efforts, attraction retention activities, and projects and plans for the future. Um, so you guys are obviously well aware we have a recent win with Marion Automotive Group and their move from their current location to their new location. And that is a pretty big investment for, for them and for our citizens. So I wanted to make sure and highlight that. Uh, with a $5 million capital investment from the company into the community, retaining 30 jobs. And of course it beautifies that area of exit 45. Um, and then also improvements to the company's operations will also benefit our citizens. Part of each project that we have for economic development isn't just a siloed activity. It takes a village, truly, for every project that we undertake. Um, on this list is just a sampling of people for different projects, not necessarily every project, but it can be very complicated. And I just wanted to highlight that it is not just a one person job. It is multiple entities, multiple people, lots of time, lots of effort, lots of energy that is into these projects. So when we see an announcement like Marion Automotive Group, it, a lot of people seems to, they tend to take it for granted that, oh well, this has happened. You know, they have a lot of negative things to say, but I don't want to take away from all the work that all these people do to put into these saving jobs and putting new investments into our community because it's extremely important for our stability and our growth. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about the value of local jobs. And I think it's important to highlight this right now, especially with Marion Automotive Group's recent transition and understanding what it means to keep 30 jobs in our community. There's a couple of different impacts. There's direct, indirect, and then there's what I call the multiplier effect. Um, just kind of touching on a few of these, um, the, get to my little cheat sheet here. The direct impact of a local job obviously is income. Income to our citizens and residents who live here, they get to keep their job, they get to keep their money, they get to keep feeding their families. Um, and that income also creates 
spending in our local economy. So that money keeps falling from them to us. Um, from there, it keeps going into our taxes, into our local economy, and helps create funding to create additional services for our citizens. And then indirect impacts um, create <coughs> demand for, for our economy. Supply and demand is, is a big part of operations. And it creates local support for the success of our businesses. Without spending in our local economy, our local businesses will, will no longer sustain. It fosters development in our innovation and entrepreneurial environment. With money coming into our county and into our local businesses, it creates inspiration for additional entrepreneurial opportunities. And then that in turn creates just stability. And that is one thing that is so desperately important to a community. Without stability, we don't have people. Without people, we don't have anything. <clears throat> and then lastly is the multiplier effect. So it kind of sums it up with the direct and the indirect. But basically, when we create a job, it creates other jobs. And it creates money back into the economy. It creates opportunities for people to buy homes, um, to create additional jobs, additional spending, growth and uh, creates opportunities in education, training opportunities, uh, and then just the cycle just continues. Uh, so every single local job creates this multiplier effect. And just to put a few numbers on it, because numbers are important, um, if you look at, just for example, the Marion Automotive Group project and the number of jobs that were retained, this is a little bit of a breakdown just from the income that is received and how that multiplies into our economy. So with a $5 million investment and their average annual wage for those employees, it creates two and a half extra jobs into our local economy. And that bottom number is the total effect aggregate economic contribution from that one expansion, from that one retaining of 30 jobs and that one investment of $5 million. So you get, a, a, it's a, to me, it's a huge example of how money contributes to our local economy from a project. So after talking about that, just talk about a few things that I've got going on. Um, I applied for a USDA Rural Development Loan Fund grant. Uh, we applied for $75,000, and this is stemming from our Smith Strong grant um, fund that was so successful. So we were to continue that momentum, and this program will essentially mirror the Town of Marion's program and offer loans to small businesses at low or no interest. Um, and it'll be application process. So we should hopefully hear sometime around July whether we are, were awarded that project. Um, I have a couple potential applications for an AFID infrastructure grant. Those two are agriculture farming um, type grants. So there'll be, uh, I can give you a little more information on that probably at the <coughs> next meeting. Um, and then I have a potential VDOT access design only grant for Pathway Park to help finish up that piece of property and a potential project for the VBRSP, which is Virginia Business Ready Sites Program. And that basically helps development for projects that need it. Um, a few of our marketing efforts that we have lately, um, we have really tried to increase our social media presence over the last, I don't know, probably six or seven months. Um, just a few little numbers for you. We've increased our engagement by 70%, our reach by 64%, and our number of likes by 60%. So. If you see it, share it. Uh, I know a lot of you already do, and I appreciate that. Um, I really feel like it gives us a little more presence in the community, and people know what we're doing, and a little more transparency for what we have going on behind the scenes. Um, and then something that we recently started doing was the department spotlights, uh, which that features every department within the county, and it'll take probably the whole year to get everybody featured, but it's once a month, and it gives that department an opportunity to give information about what they do, kind of things that the community and, and citizens maybe wouldn't know that we do. Um, it seems to be gaining a lot of attraction and attention and um, any information that we can give to help educate our citizens, I think, on what we do is very important. <coughs> um, a few of the attraction trips that I have been on for promoting Smith County, um, I went on a Select USA and VEDP Roto. With that trip, I had 11 VEDP-led meetings with businesses, one one who are interested in Virginia and potentially Smith County and from that event I have four strong leads that are in the development stage so those are leads that were identified for us specifically from those meetings um, upcoming I have a select USA investment summit which is a smaller scale of the trip that I took 
uh, it's just a little more structured and a little more streamlined. So um, I really hope to come back with several uh, strong leads from that one. And then some of our retention efforts. Um, I'm currently developing a local business uh, BRE strategy, business retention expansion strategy, and this will be separate from our current regional economic development office, but it will lift both. So nothing is meant to replace or duplicate. It is only meant to lift to make sure there's nothing that is missed or um, left <coughs> behind in another way for us to be more into our local community and our uh, industries. Another strategy that I'm currently looking at is a headquarters strategy, and this basically will just identify all of our current existing industries headquarters to make sure that we're not missing any opportunities with supply chain partners and, and things of that nature. Uh, and another opportunity that we'd like to, to create is an industry roundtable event, which would be an annual event for all of our industry and um, manufacturing facilities. It will bring them together to give them opportunity to ask questions, we'll connect them to people, um, we're, we're in the works of developing that at this time. And then a few of our upcoming <coughs> projects and plans. You guys know we have our housing Smith Grow. Um, I spoke with Jimmy today and he said we have 42 total homes under construction or under agreement to be constructed. This includes a mix of single family modular duplex units and townhomes. So we're really excited about that program and uh, we hope to see that continue to grow. Some of the planning efforts, um, I am underway with uh, the Economic Development Strategic Plan, the first one that we have ever done, and that should be completed um, in May with the presentation time of around June. Um, I hope to get, get you guys a little summary for the board retreat, uh, but it's, it's not quite done yet, but almost. Um, the Hotel and Marketing Feasibility Study, which is a joint effort between the EDA, you guys, Town of Marion, and Tourism, um, and we plan to have a, uh, three sites studied for that feasibility study. Um, we continue to engage in our workforce development programs and partnerships. The uh, Manufacturing Excellence Program with the school just finished its first round. It went very well. I'm very excited about the future for that program. I think they are looking at two rounds a year rather than just one because it was very successful and they want to make sure they include all, um, all brands of, of that in, in their planning for the future. Um, and then, of course, we're always looking for redevelopment opportunities and planning for the future as far as our next industrial site or sites for development that need grant funding, all of those things. Uh, project development, we just continue to foster and develop potential projects that have been identified. Currently, I have seven leads from either direct contact or events that I have been to, and most of those mm -hmm. are, are looking really strong, so I'm very hopeful for a lot busy, busy time in the next few, few months. Um, community engagement and marketing, those are just continuing um, on things that I do daily. But uh, some of the things that I didn't put in there that I wanted to mention was some continuing education for myself. I am in the last stretch of the CEDC certification, which is a certified economic developer. Um, I take my last course in May and I should sit for the exams shortly thereafter. And I am doing the Virginia Women's Municipal Leadership Institute. That is a mouthful, but I um, hope <laughs> to gain lots of good connections and, and leadership uh, possibilities out of that one in the future. But that is all that I have. If you have questions, I am happy to answer them. Any questions? I have one. Uh, mm -hmm. In the very first part of your, your presentation, you talked about the move of Marion City. Marion Automotive. Yes. Uh, that leads to a big empty spot. Everybody in the community has talked about it, but I don't know if it's been officially released or not. But uh, there's going to be a huge development there. There will be. Yes. I look forward to the day when we can <coughs> complete the conversation and let everybody know what <laughs> what will be there. I mean, everybody's talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we've definitely been in communications for an announcement date, and hopefully that will be very soon. And I heard one more rumor, which I was tickled to death to hear. Uh, and it's just, just a rumor, nothing official, nothing from the board, so to speak. <laughs> but the latest rumor I heard was that Rural King was looking at, was thinking about moving into the Food City building when they leave, move out. I would love to see that. Yeah, that would that be great. That retail sale, and you know, uh, I, I like that sales tax. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that helps the county coffers, like the homes that you're talking about there. Yes. You figure each one of those is an average two hundred and twenty thousand dollar home. Just think what that did to our tax base. Absolutely. Yep. 
I mean, that's the name of the game. The more we can improve our tax base and get industry in here to take care of our machinery and tools, the less the, yeah. the real estate tax for the citizens will be. Absolutely. It's growth with intention is what right. I like to call it. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I'd like Go to ahead. say one thing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to thank you for the presentation sure. and everything you do. It's all behind the scenes. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, usually when you're up here discussing anything, it's usually good news. So usually. Uh, keeping us mm -hmm. up on everything. But uh, again, I just I just want to thank you because I've learned through our conversations how much you do, and it blew me away the first time I ever spoke with her. <laughs> of all the things that goes on in the economic development and through Lori and uh, yeah. and others. Um, I even recently learned something new speaking to Sean. It just uh, it just it just keeps coming and uh, you know it is it is so important we need to keep, you know, investing in Absolutely. in uh, everything we can for this community. I'm I'm excited. I think that's gonna be a major impact for exit forty five. I agree. I think that is the start to uh, many good things to come, hopefully, yeah. uh, as, you're, as you're coming into it the just calendar. takes one good development for yeah. for the fire to catch. And, <coughs> and, and the way I envision it, I mean, it, it's it, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I think so, so too. Yeah. Thank you again. Of course. My pleasure. <coughs> Chairman, I have one good question. Um, I read, I think it was this morning, that Caswell County just announced a salmon farm that they're under development over there. Have you seen anything on that? I have not, no. Okay. Apparently it's being built behind the college from what I've read. Um, it looks like it might be, a, if it takes off, it might be a pretty nice little investment. I, I would encourage you to maybe kind of look at that sector as well to see. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. we're, we've got beautiful rural country here. Agribusiness <coughs> is one and of our largest industries, for if sure. If there was a way to maybe tap in, I know we had a Tilapia. Tilapia and sample, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. again, if there's a way to to bring a, a industry in on some of the farming that would be relatively clean industry. Oh, absolutely. That yeah. wouldn't pollute or anything. I don't, um, I say I no to nothing. <laughs> yeah, if you could just kind of add that to the portfolio. Sure. Of just kind of looking. Because mm -hmm. where they're building it is not flat ground. And they're going to spend a lot of money preparing that site. So if they're going to fight the rocks and over there in Claypool Hill, Area. I'll definitely check into that for sure. Thank we you. might have a leg up to start with. Sure. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Moving on now to our <coughs> distinguished people from VDOT. We got a public hearing <coughs> on the six year plan updating numbers. Uh, you mean to read the, the advertisement or? Please. Okay. I noticed the public hearing for a six-year VDOT plan by Smith County, Virginia, the Virginia Department of, of Transportation, and the Board of Supervisors of Smith County in accordance with Section 33.1-70.01 of the Code of Virginia will conduct a joint public hearing in the board meeting room of Smith County Government Center Building 121 Bagley Circle, Marion, Virginia 24354 at 5 p.m. or soon thereafter as possible. On April 11, 2024, the purpose of this public hearing is to receive public comment on the proposed secondary six-year plan for fiscal years 2024-25 through 2029-30 in Smith County and on the secondary system construction budget for fiscal year 2024-25. Copies of the proposed plan and budget may be reviewed by contacting the Abingdon Residency Office of the Virginia Department of Transportation at 276-676-5582 or the Smith County offices located at 121 Bagley Circle, Marion, Virginia, 24354. Thank you. Uh, do you want to come forward and say anything? Or? Go make you do it, are they? I think so. <laughs> it's my lucky day. Um, I think in your uh, packet there you uh, should have a copy of the working draft of the six-year plan and um, we have re uh, revised the numbers and um, you'll see those uh, represented there in your handout um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. It's in the front of the red tab. Anyone have any questions for them? I think we covered this once before we added 
we added one at the sixth year or something like that. So. Right. We didn't um, add any routes this year um, due due to the increase in uh, construction costs that we've incurred. We had to revise the numbers, and um, so uh, there wasn't any routes added this year. But um, we do have uh, Rosenbaum Hollow Route 652 planned uh, for construction uh, later this fall, and. Um, we, we have projects that we'll be working on um, throughout the next six years, and hopefully um, when more funding comes in, we'll be able to add additional routes to the plan. Please don't forget Town Springs Road. Town Springs Road. <laughs> We've gone through it several times. It's, it's not going to be an issue. We can definitely um, remember to take a look at that in the future. So. Any questions for while we got her here? Mr. Chairman, um, I have some questions from um, people that live out on the Hungry Mother Road regarding okay. the texture of the what the product was put down. Said it was very rough, and it was the comment they they used was that when they walked their dog on it, it was so sharp the dog could not oh, get irritated the dog's paws. Was that something recent? In in my brain, it seems like it is, but I think it's probably been more like a year, a year or more. Okay, that was that route was probably so we call it the slurry seal or latex, okay. um, and that's just um, just seals the road and it just gives more gives a longer life before we have to revisit it for pavement. So, does that type of road does it kind of soft? Not soft is not the right word. You know, as, tra as traffic runs over it, it does dull you know dull that pavement. So um, hopefully hopefully that will occur. So. I have not heard from them since the initial. Okay lay down with the product. Right. Um, so I assumed it had gradually weathered off. Weathered off, yeah. Okay. Very good, thank you. Uh, <coughs> one last question. And I don't know if you all even do this. And I asked Pam in one of the last meetings and she must have misunderstood. There at exit 35 in Chill Howard, mm -hmm. when you get off the interstate and try to turn left, you know, you can't see. I, the bar and she sent an answer back and said the barriers can't be. I wouldn't ask him for the barriers to be moved. I'm just wondering if you can put a parabolic mirror on the, up under the bridge on the other side to where a person can get off and see if something's coming or something like that. Now, you, there's nothing, uh, yeah, those barriers need to stay there. Right. I don't know if you all have those, that you use them anywhere. Ty typically, we, do, we okay. don't use mirrors, um, you know, along the right of way. There are, <coughs> you know, there are a lot around the areas that are in there, typically on private property. But um, I, know, I know we have had complaints about that section of road it's and a, it's a big time blind spot right there I, right. and i get it and uh you're late locked and, public and public that public. extra lane has helped a ton of more right. you know, i was just trying to figure out that when uh people getting off you start to pull out and there's one coming so right and, and i do know that that's been being brought to our attention i'm, I'm sure it's something that we'll continue to explore and see if we can okay. find and a, a good solution <laughs> Right now, we're in a public hearing for the uh, six-year plan. Uh, any, anyone in the audience wishing to speak about the six-year plan? Can I ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. On this under the C in there, it's got a date. Is that is that a completion date, or is that a start date, or is that a... I don't uh, understand the, the heading. It just says... When you look. That, that is probably um, when, when that will... Um, Probably like plan, plan, plan for construction, um, and it could, and that date might not be um, particularly accurate because I do see the Rosenbaum Hollow is says 28, um, and, and we actually plan to construct that later this fall. Um, now the um, Old Slash Road, we, we already have worked on that project, mm -hmm. so that that's the reason it has that. Yeah, a couple of days in my area. And mm -hmm. I just know that there's been a couple people asking. Right. I just wanted to know if these dates. Were if and they you, represented anything or if they were just dates. Well, and you'll see um, further down, um, like below the block, it'll have the fiscal year 25 through 30 mm -hmm. and then the money allocations. Um, and then that shows when, what fiscal year that the money becomes available for those projects. So um, so the money for Rosenbaum Hollow is available uh, fiscal year 25 and it's... Um, that completes the full funding for that project of 280,000. So um, that that's the better representative of when when you might be able to figure out when those go to construction. So 
Thank you. Uh -huh. I had just learned how to read the old forms and you changed the form. I know. And I, I'm not a fan of the new form. I struggle with how to read it as well. I, I like the old system better, yes. but um, these are produced out of central office and unfortunately we don't have a lot of faith. Well, that's, that's key. What I say about VDOT, uh, mm -hmm. it's central office in Richmond or somewhere dictating what's going on down here. and. Uh, it, it aggravates me. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, it's it's definitely not very user friendly. Okay. Anything else on the six year plan? Here's a chance for someone in the audience if they want to speak about it. Um, all right. Anyone else on the board have any? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Now don't run off because we're gonna have questions on uh, B dot. All right. Before um, we before we leave the public hearing, if it's okay with the board, I'd like to ask that the uh, rules of public hearings be uh, waived and action taken on tonight. All right. Um, <coughs> make a motion to waive the rules. Second. Have a motion to waive in the second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of, wa of waiving the rules signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Likewise. Unanimous. Now we'll entertain a to pass or reject. Six year plan. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Likewise. Remember me next time I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and now now let's take the six year plan off the table. And I got a B, B dot concern, and I apologize, y'all, the unfortunate people. Uh, uh, one of our industries on a dead end road is wanting to crosswalk across their uh, road in front of their it's a, in front of their <coughs> front, from one parking lot to the other. You've probably heard about it. Four to six months to send it to engineers and to get it back down here is ridiculous. One trip up there and see what's going on with two or three hundred people a day, well, it's more than that, two or three hundred people cost, per shift, per shift yeah. crossing that road. Uh, the company is willing to pay the cost. They're willing to do the work. All they need is an approval from VDOT that if an engineer can't drive out there and look at it and say, yes, we need one, or it wouldn't be a big, it wouldn't be a hazard, what does it take to get something like that done? I do know that it's been brought to the attention and, and it has been, uh, Pam was working with our traffic engineer on it, so. And they're saying it's going to be four to six months. I mean, yeah, I, I realize government is slow, but that, that just goes to heart what I say. VDOT is Richmond, we down here don't matter. Well, and this will be handled out of, out of the Bristol district, not necessarily Richmond, so I do know our traffic engineer does have that on his plans and you know, I don't know what his schedule is, but it can is, we pick him up and bring him up here one day? <laughs> you might can offer. I buy lunch. <laughs> yeah. I so mean, we will let them know with. that you all did ask about it. We've had people get hit trying to cross the road now, and that's why we want a, a crosswalk. Well, and I think I think maybe there's some flight distance issues, so um, you know, that's something that he's going to have to take a look at and see, you know, if it's. Um, if well, it's you know, if it's a slight difference. We should, the problem is whether the whether the crosswalk is there or not, they're going to be crossing the road. Right. It's not like by putting the crosswalk in, we're going to allow road crossing. And maybe if I'm thinking, you know, put a sign up, watch for the deer, and deer don't read it. You know, it's, it's the same thing here. We're not. They're not going to read it. They're going to cross from the parking lot to the factory. And if we can make it a little safer by putting a crosswalk sign up, even with the limited sight, it, it gives you a little bit more protection. Uh, I just. I have a problem with, and I'm sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> anything else while we got them here? Anything else from me? I've got one little something. I just somebody may have already mention it. The new part they put on 81 northbound at seven mile forward to three. It's great. But I'm coming in this evening to this meeting. Right after you pass the bridge northbound, in between those two lanes right there, chunks gone. Now the the line at the middle of the road, there's chunks of asphalt gone, maybe this big. I didn't even know it till I hit it. I yeah. thought it was going to bust the top. You might want to check it. Okay. We can let our interstate crews know that. Good job, what mile, what mile marker was that, roughly? It's at 7 Mile 4 at the bridge. I, ride, I don't know the mile. Northbound. 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 39. 39. Yeah, right when you start up the new section, 
which like I said is great, done a good job. <coughs> it broke all the pieces right in there for some reason. That construction may have done some damage. It's yeah. very possible, yeah. Mr. Sturgeon. Well, I have paused. I just want to thank Garland Gross for the job he's done over the years with VDOT. He has been a lifesaver to the school system. We've called him on lots of emergencies. Garland, thank you so much. Well, you've, been, you've done an awesome job, and we appreciate all, all your help. Thank you so much. I'm married now. You're, that's what I heard. I'm <clears throat> more excited about that, too. Thank you, sir. See, we're not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I lost my place now. Financial status. Minutes of the March 28th meeting. Uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to read the meeting, uh, read the minutes. Um, there's a couple of grammatical corrections. There's a couple of dates there that need to be changed, but I think we can make those. So I ask for a motion to approve, uh, subject to the uh, grammar, the correction of the uh, terminology, so to speak. So move. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. No, I'm saying this. I'm here. We have two abstentions. Uh, Chris and Courtney both they weren't here last time. The financial status report. Uh, Lisa will give us that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the back side of your additional folder behind the red tab, You'll have the county financial report as of March 31st, 2024. There in the highlighted uh, gold <coughs> is the March ending bank balance of $22,810,891.02. Uh, there's a comparison to the last year's number there on the, on the right side of the document, uh, just for your review. Um, uh, the restricted funds are listed there in the bottom at $10,487,302.49 for a total of all funds is $33,298,193.51. I will note that on this, on the sheriff radar fund, I know that's one that you pay a lot of attention to and try to keep an eye on, that $211,000 is um, Incorrect. There was a deposit of $115,000 for a law enforcement grant that went into that line. So we've removed that in April. So the true balance there is going to be about $96,000 in the sheriff radar fund. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. The, the, the radars around the school system, are those included in this particular line item or they go to a different budget? Those, those revenues do. <laughs> They, they do go into the 744 fund. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And if I'm not mistaken, we do 100% of that instead of the 80-20 mix as the normal interstate. So we're, we're, some, we're putting all the those revenues into the 744 fund. I have another question, but it may not be the proper time <coughs> regarding the fee that's attached to that. Is that a graduated fee with each violation or is it is it a straight okay because I'm getting some mixed information from people but, okay good question uh, so it's got this doesn't really have to do with our sheriff's department but are they not running as much radar on the inter my way I see uh, the state police doing an awful lot of radar on the interstate uh, I can probably answer that there there has been an increase in that um, uh, uh, you know, of course, a lot of that for, for that time is for the deputies' time off. They come out and do extra duties. They will do that, and also uh, roads within the county <coughs> as uh, as requests come in. Uh, but I will say um, I have noticed here here in the last little bit that that there has been an increase in that. And you will probably see that. Uh, even more so over the next probably two or three months. Yeah, I know back back in its heyday, for that we used to be looking at but close to forty to fifty thousand a month coming into the county treasurer for the and 
and, and to speak to that too, you know, a lot of that comes uh, to the court mm -hmm. and the judges. Uh, you know, sometimes you, uh, sometimes you may have a judge that's going to do heavier fines and and stuff, and and we see a lot of that just back and forth. Okay. So, and that not not saying that's the reason, but that that is also a contributing factor. Okay. Thank you, Lisa, for that. Now, do you want to move on down to anything you can say about the payables or invoices, or do we just need a motion to approve? Just a motion to approve. Do I have that? Make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Here's none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Likewise. Sounds like that was unanimous. Now, for the time we've all been waiting on, citizens' time. Uh, first off, I have Mark Cheney signed up. Come forward, state your name and uh, address for the record, please. My name is Mark Cheney. I'm the commander of Post 18 American Legion, located on 107 Laurel Springs Road, Marion. Uh, good evening, honorable members of this board. I'm uh, humbled to be able to speak before you today, uh, this evening, uh, as a military veteran. The American Legion, and I'm, I'm here really just to speak briefly, if I uh, can, about the services of the American Legion. For a long time, uh, the American Legion, and my best guess, has been thought of as our building as an auction house. Uh, we have an auction that has been going on for a long time there, and we are blessed that we were able to have uh, Mr. Widener come out and, uh, with some help and look around our place. But we're more than an auction house. Uh, the American Legion is the largest wartime veteran service organization with nearly 2, mil 2 million members and more than 12,000 posts in communities throughout America. The American Legion was chartered by the Congress in 1919 as a patriotic mutual health and community service organization. We are the only ones that can say that we were chartered by Congress. The American Legion also was an instrumental, is instrumental in getting the original GI Bill through Congress and the creation of the Department of Veteran Affairs. The American Legion remains active. We support our current military personnel and the veterans. We sponsor uh, the American Legion baseball, Boys State, middle school, high school, oratorical contests, and other activities for our youth of our community. We engage with the Congress of the United States to support Americanism with such efforts as the adoption of a constitutional amendment to prohibit the desecration of the United States flag. Within the Commonwealth of Virginia, there are 17 districts that contain over 208 American Legion posts with a total membership of over 39,000 members. In 2018, the Department of Virginia celebrated its 100th annual convention, marking a major milestone. The American Legion of Virginia consists of the American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary, Sons of the American Legion, and the American Legion Riders, which are motorcyclists. Each of these groups work uh, united together in the spirit of mutual helpfulness to support our military veterans who live in our Virginia communities. Membership in the American Legion provides many benefits that we just simply don't have the time, uh, I don't have the time to discuss now, but more important, together we make a difference. You might not see that, but we make a difference in this community. We are brothers and sisters with the distinct honor of holding the title of military veteran. Locally, Marion is home in Smith County, uh, particularly to the American Legion Post 18. We provide vital support to Smith County veterans. Post 18 in Marion has, uh, uh, we paid the rent for veterans, whether or not they are members of the Legion. We have paid rent for them. We have paid electric and water bills. In addition, we help Smith County uh, community, whether they're veteran or not, uh, when a tragedy strikes. We help families that are displaced from fire, from flood, we had a family not too long ago that was displaced by fire. We opened the Legion and had the folks come in and take whatever they needed, uh, pots, pans, clothing. We've taken veterans and others out to the 
Walmarts and so forth just to help get clothes ready for kids to get back to school after a flood or a fire. Just last year, the American Legion at Post 18, we performed, performed a laying of the wreath ceremony at the courthouse. We participated in the July 4th parade. We handed out school supplies during back to school events. We participated in 9-11 Memorial Remembrance at the fire department. We sponsored the post uh, trunk or treat for community children. We held the field of flags ceremony where placing nearly 300 American flags on our post grounds to honor flag day. We perform flag retirements. You say, what is that? That's a ceremony where this flag that is shattered, it's uh, torn, uh, tattered, we'll go ahead and retire that flag. And we also invited the local Boy Scouts to participate so that they could give receive their uh, awards in, in time. Uh, we participate in the Christ, uh, Christmas parades throughout Smith County. We coordinate our efforts and we assist the VFW with placing uh, flags on the courthouse grounds. So this, this Memorial Day, I've already attended a meeting with the VFW, uh, the brothers and sisters of the VFW, and the American Legion will help to put out those flags on the courthouse grounds this year. We, will, uh, we also have a ride coming up, our motorcyclists. Uh, this is a ride, uh, who can I give this to? This is a ride that was uh, put on, uh, brought to our attention through the district attorney of Smith County, and it's called the uh, BACA, or Bikers Against Child Abuse. And so we're actually going to be a stopping point for the riders coming in. There'll be pro uh, probably 150 or more riders that are participating in this ride. They will stop at our post. They will receive a free lunch on their way and traveling. We also not only uh, help sponsor it, we also uh, ride in it. Uh, myself and a few others will be riding in this uh, uh, child, uh, the uh, Bikers Against Child Abuse. So we are active, we do a whole lot. American Legion of Post 18 is made up of over 60 members. We're growing, we're not actually decreasing. Our membership last count with our district was at 100%. But uh, I just checked that number today and we're at 102%. And that's not too bad when you consider we're all getting older. Not maybe you guys, but we are as veterans. The uh, riders group, our motorcyclists, received this charter from the state of Virginia and national. We had Sonny Dickerson, who is the top commander for the American Legion of Virginia, come down in October and uh, present the charter to our men and women veterans who ride motorcycles. The group performs uh, fundraisers to help meet the immediate financial needs of our military veterans in and around Smith County. This year we uh, plan on doing a whole lot more for our community. Um, I will uh, leave some business cards with you as well, sir. Uh, as I close up, and I, I know I'm probably over my time, but as we close up, I just want to bring to your attention, as I did uh, Marion um, Town Council, you guys are a very important part of the community. You make it or you break it. The pot thing that, is, that I hope isn't going to go missing as this region, as this county grows, you're having veterans come in. They might not fly <coughs> on your radar, but I'm starting to see that. I'm starting to see an uptick of veterans coming into our community that their first call is to the American Legion or the VFW for help. And I would just, as my cards get passed out, again, uh, we work hand in hand with the VFW. If there's something that we can help with the military uh, veterans coming into our community, if you think we can be of value, we'd be honored, we'd be blessed, and we'd be available. So thank each and every one of you for what you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Taney. Uh, next we have Tabitha Hayes, you come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Tabitha Haynes, and I am a United States American veteran, and I'm actually here to support our commander who is over our American Legion, number 18, our chief financial officer there. And I just wanted to introduce myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Any other citizens wanting to speak? 
come forward and state your name and address for the record. Sarah Taylor, 604 East Quinn. Um, I, I was here at a meeting last month and I made it known that I had made a request for information uh, regarding the new assessments. And today I actually got my assessment papers in the mail for the appeal that I made on March 4th. Uh, it looks like sorry, in comparison... Can you speak up? I'm sorry. It looks like in comparison with other reassessments I've seen that the amount that they have reduced mine by was pretty generic. Um, so again, I'm here to make, make it known that I've made repeated requests for information on February 26th, March 8th, and on the meeting on the 14th of March. And I'm here again uh, because I've seen on your website, it, it says, and I quote, Smith County must respond to your request within five working days of receiving it. Day one is considered a day after your request is received. And I have had virtually no response from anybody uh, as far as my request for information. And, you know, the fact that you have a county administrator that makes six figures that cannot process this, that passes it off to someone else, and I don't get a response, like I said, dating back to February 26th, uh, I had to make an appeal in that time. Uh, I didn't have all the information I would have liked to have had, but now that I've, it's come full circle and I've got this back, I can see that it looks like the appeals office never got the information that I sent them, the photographs and things that I submitted. Uh, they acknowledged they didn't get it, but they didn't acknowledge that they got the second sending of it via email. Um, so, you know, that being said, I'm going to have to make uh, an appeal to the Board of Equalization, and, you know, once again, I don't have all the information that I've requested, uh, you know, if any, it's just what I have on hand, you know, my, my own information. And, uh, you know, so, so given some of these facts, I mean, I just, I think it's atrocious that information transparency apparently does not exist where these assessments are concerned. And like I said, you're paying somebody a six-figure salary. If they can't handle this, then maybe they should resign. I don't It's know. not his job to handle it. That belongs to the Commissioner of Revenue. They handle the assessments. They handle the, uh, the appeals. It all goes through the Commissioner of Revenue's office. That is not what I was told when I went down there. I was actually told that the board contracted these assessments, yep. and if it couldn't be answered down there, the reassessment office should answer it, and then they referred me to the board of yeah, supervisors. I was actually copied on an email um, response from, from the Pearson appraisal to um, Mrs. Taylor's concerns, and as far as I was understanding, that they answered the questions that, that she had. So if there are further questions, I'm most, more than happy to to get more information to her. I have no problem with that. But we're not plugged into the loop for reass for the reassessment goes through um, the 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 Pearsons and the Commission mm -hmm. of Revenue and now, like she said, the Board of Equalization. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and they're referring people like me. They referred me to you guys. That's why I've been here twice. And we're That's, not in that loop really. Yeah. The only thing we do is we, we pay the bill when they the invoice when it when it comes in. Yeah, we don't have the information available. We, you know, if we need information, we got to go to them to get it. Uh, I mean, yeah, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm happy to 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 chase that. Yeah, sure. Because mm -hmm. sure. I mean, I've asked for specific things, and and again, I've been referred back here. I've been referred to the reassessment office, which they referred me back here, so they didn't have it. That I needed to make a request to the board of supervisors, and I'm saying the same thing. Why would you guys have this information? I don't, I don't think that you would have it, but that's what they told me to do. But well, we don't. <laughs> and this is so, what, can I ask, what's some of the information that you need? Well, uh, I had asked for access to media file that they uh, include per their uniform assessment guide. They say they have these. And I was told by the assessment office that I would be given access to it. And then I was told that access could not be given to it. Well, so The media file, the picture? Uh, yeah, I was told it actually dates back to 1980, and the reason I was asking that is because I have 10 years worth of filled data sheets that they've just copied over from year to year. They did not actually do any assessment of my property from what I can tell. They just copied it. I've been getting a new roof for 10 years according to the filled data sheets that I have. And I asked about specific credentials of the people who assessed my property. Uh, I've asked about, you know, different methodology, which some of that was provided by Pearson's early on. 
Um, but I don't understand how you can assess a property accurately when you don't measure the land that's associated with it. And they have software, you know, that such as Eagle View, which I understand is very high end, very precise. They can get specific <coughs> measurements using that. And the Uniform Assessment Guide says that they are to be using that, that an assessor must look at the property in that program. I was told that they didn't do that with my property and they just couldn't find a plot or anything else. I went upstairs in the courthouse and put my hands on it in less than two minutes. So something <coughs> slipped somewhere with these assessors. So that's why I'm asking because I don't believe these assessments are, are very accurate. I don't believe they assessed anything. I think they just artificially inflated a baseline and then put some numbers down. And I believe uh, pencil whipping was the term that uh, the project manager used when I spoke with him about it. So I got my letter today. And again, it doesn't look like that it's anywhere near what it should be for comparable properties. I also asked for comparable properties that they would use to, to write this assessment. So all these things have kind of been unanswered, but they're all valid. So that's, that's why I made a request of the Board of Supervisors because I was told to come here. I was not given the information at their office, which is where it should be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's where it should be. Yeah, because we're not privy to, you know, what's going. We don't. We don't even know who's, uh, who, who else has asked questions. You know. Yeah, because I mean, they told me they said Board of Supervisors contracted us to do this job. They're kind of in charge of it, I guess is how you would put it. And you know, they they sent me here when I made further requests and asked for very specific information because they just, I guess, they didn't have it or they didn't know how to access it or maybe they just didn't want to but I don't know. I am happy to know that you do realize that the board of equalization is that next step. I mean that's I think that's a good yeah. that's a good place to Yeah. There's a reason they have that that set up. And I would really like for this information to you know I, I'd like for it to be available to me before we have to go to that step because obviously it's needed. And you know I guess this is the end of the line as far as that goes. I mean Maybe somebody can just, you know, check in with that office and find out why they can't provide it. Yeah. I'll take the lead on it. So, I mean, that's pretty much all I have on it, but, you know, that's it. It is what it is. <coughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to, that's all I have to sign up. Anyone else wishing to speak? Now's your chance to give us your dollar worth. Two cents that you can go far. Come on board and state your name and address for the record. My name is Charles Hayden. I live at 726 South Church Street, Marion, Virginia. I requested this study that was done that's supposed to be driving all of this housing rate increases, and whatever. I went through this. Now I'm going to ask a few simple questions. I'll read it off to ask some simple questions. Has any of y'all read the entire thing? Or just glossed over it? I mean, that would be a very important first step. Yeah, this is the, to the 2022 study. 2022 study which has started this tax increase and everything because so-called housing shortage. Yeah. There's a couple board members that weren't even on here in 2022. I can get you a copy of it. Mm -hmm. well, I have a copy of it. I've already got a copy of it. Yeah. But the thing is, study says we're a thousand housing short. I need that explained. How is that possible? When M. and Henry has three stories of that hospital, they could remodel to make housing. From my research, the reason that's not happening is because they are tax exempt. So the county and town's not getting no money from those apartments. Are you referring to, are you referring to the old hospital? Yes. Oh, uh, that has been remodeled, and it is the School of Health Sciences. 
Christchurch. But yeah. only the first floor. So my you son, know. my son attends that school. Yes. Actually. No, it's so uh, the first two floors I know are classrooms and, <coughs> and and that kind of stuff. I do know that he has told me that they are working on that. From my understanding, they've just not finalized what they're doing there yet. Well, yeah. what they're going to do is they've already yeah. made the statements they're cutting back of what's being offered here with what increase in students stating in here that most of those studies will be online they don't need a house so where's the driver for the thousand house shortage all this is on page 20 of this study now we have in the county four subdivisions with the first one being in 1993 I, with those, in this amount of time, if we were a thousand house short, why is there still 104 of those lots not sold? Because if we were that short, believe me, people would be buying up the lot regardless of the price. So we're, this is a wish list to raise taxes, plain and simple. Well, I can tell you, sir, that my, I have a son who, who's a teacher in this school system, and he has looked for, I guess you'd say, a starter home to afford to buy. You can't find a starter no, home he because he the realtors have jacked the prices up. A starter person that's making less than 40000 a year cannot buy a $230,000 house. I agree with you. Well... Does this was study was done to drive prices up, plain and simple. Because if you read it, you will find out this is all a snow job for the public. And your time is up, and I disagree with you. Uh, and here, here's the other thing. Your time's up, sir. Okay. Go, but, go ahead and make the point. But here's the other thing. They say the employers need the house. I have worked in public, all factories, construction. Not once has the employer ever asked me, did I need housing? But they sure have told me if I didn't come to work every day, they'd fire me. So that's another snow job. I'm done. <laughs> the employers are telling us they want their employees to live closer and not be traveling in here from uh, Washington County or Withville or from... But Bay we West. have no... Growth. <coughs> the growth is in Washington County and in Will County and in Grayson County. We have no growth. And that's what we're trying to spur. Well, you can't growth. do that by jacking prices up to where the <coughs> first time people that's working in these factories for 30000 a year can't afford to buy to come in here. I'm not going to get in an argument with you, but uh, we don't set the prices for homes. Well, I understand you know, that. We make it available. We try to put the models in place where it can be built. I and understand we see the need that, for some of these modest income homes, and that's what we try to promote. But my complaint is the snow job this is that was paid for with tax money. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Hearing none, I'll close public, uh, citizens now. Old business, committee report recommendations. And first off, we have public safety. Mr. Wyder. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee, the public safety committee for Smith County had met on April 4th, all members in attendance. No motions, informational only. Mr. Crawford, who was in attendance, advised that the uh, Public Safety Advisory Committee had voted to allow him to start the RFP process for countywide turnout gear to get better pricing. Mr. Crawford noted that he would start the process and send to the Public Safety Advisory Committee and then on to the Public Safety, where ultimately the board will vote. Uh, Mr. Crawford had also mentioned that Brett Miller from Marion Fire EMS had came to the meeting and gave a presentation on a program called Flow MSP 
Mr. Crawford went over some of the benefits from using this program and advised that he will speak with each department to see if they can use the program within hopes of getting a discount. Also, Mr. Crawford had noted that there is an upcoming change order to the contract with Motorola to move a tower to Edgewood. Mr. Crawford advised that it would be a split with Washington County and said it would benefit us in sharing uh, the core equipment and building costs. And that was all we had <coughs> the Public Safety Committee. All right, thank you very much. Nothing to vote on there, isn't it? I see. Uh, moving to the Budget Committee. Uh, Sean, would you? Absolutely, thank you, sir. Uh, Budget Committee did have a meeting on April 4th. We had a few items on the, uh, the, uh, the agenda. The first one uh, was we uh, entertained a few folks from the fire departments who had special requests for um, the upcoming budget year. Um, Adkins Fire Department's asking for some funding to help with paving. Um, Adwolf Fire Department's asking for um, some additional funding to help with siding replacement and some um, other equipment repairs, turnout gear. Um, another item that we discussed, we did have the um, Davenport was was at the, the meeting. Uh, we discussed in closed session some uh, the moral obligation request from Saltwell. We'll have some recommendations, I expect, after the next budget committee meeting. And then finally, we just reviewed the current status of the um, draft budget for FY25. Um, at the time of the budget meeting, I was down to less than $500,000 deficit for the next cup next year uh, we're still working through a few things had a nice little surprise email from the uh, the jail that increased their costs 150 160 thousand dollars so where we dig a little and we shovel back in but um, we're working through that um, no recommendations from budget committee uh, for tonight's meeting okay thank you thank you very much planning commission's recommendations mr williams thank you mr chairman uh, so as you may recall, we had a public hearing back in February to consider um, the comprehensive plan. Um, the Planning Commission um, tabled it that evening, but they came back together again on March 28th. Uh, and after deliberation, um, Ms. Wagner opened the floor for discussion about the decision to table the comprehensive plan from the last meeting. The commissioners read through the plan, noted a few minor edits. Ms. Wagner then opened the floor for a motion to recommend the board adopt the comprehensive plan. Mr. Spence made a motion to adopt the plan uh, with the suggested edits. Uh, it was seconded by Mr. Shepard, um, and that was passed unanimously. So that's the recommendation from the Planning Commission. Okay, it's a recommendation from the Planning Commission. Move to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? This comprehensive plan has been a long time in coming. Uh, it, it's been a process, yes, sir. Uh, hearing no. I'm going to ask for a show of hands on this one, though. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Unanimous. All righty. All right, the next item you have on your agenda uh, is a map amendment, and this may be a little bit confusing, so let me explain. Um, at the last public hearing, we considered uh, rezoning a piece of property in Midway, Mr. Harper's property. Uh, and following that, the Planning Commission made a recommendation, and you all subsequently uh, voted on that. A uh, little detail that we missed is that um, your bylaws prevent you from voting um, on a matter immediately following a public hearing. Um, and so because those weren't waived, we felt that it would be best to put it on tonight's agenda uh, and just ask that you vote on it one more time. And I apologize for that. It's my fault for not uh, not asking that the rules be waived. So tonight we can do it without waiving any rules. Make a motion we approve that zoning of that property. Marshall, if I correctly. Uh, yes, that was the Planning Commission's recommendation. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. We probably need to do uh, the other. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so going way, I think way back to January, uh, originally this was a special use permit application. Um, and so technically, our, now that you've rezoned the property to commercial, it technically makes the, the special use for it null and void, um, but if you really wanted to, to remove it from the agenda or any debate about it, then I would recommend that you follow the Planning Commission's recommendation and deny the special use permit. Yeah, we did that last time, but to be safe, I would mm -hmm. I would ask we do that again. 
I'll make that motion to deny special use permit. I'll second it. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Unanimous. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. And I'll try to be careful in the future. Okay. Yep. New business. SIG request. I'll take this one, sir. Um, so, Sholey um, in Chilhowie, now known as SIG, you may remember, or I guess the two board, board members who fairly new uh, may not remember this, but about a year ago, the uh, Board of Supervisors and the EDA entered into an agreement, a revenue sharing agreement related to the Sholey expansion uh, that tied uh, the additional tax revenues, a portion of the additional tax revenues uh, would be paid from the county back to the EDA to help them recoup the incentives that they're paying for the, um, the railroad um, rail spur. Um, when the rail spur costs came back in, originally the um, board chose to help the EDA and increase a little bit more of the, those revenue sharing. Uh, they just, we just got the final um, estimate from Norfolk Southern for the, um, for the switch and it's $87,200 a little bit more than that, um, higher. So the EDA is asking for one more time of a small additional amount of $20,000 additional uh, revenue sharing. Just to let you know, the addition itself increased the um, real estate taxes just under 80,000 and the machinery and tools tax will probably double that. Uh, so we're, you're, you're, you're recouping a, a fair amount more than your, than your um, sharing back and the EDA is not asking for everything they're just asking for a portion to help help them cover the costs that they're that they're incurring uh, so you have a memo in your packet there from Miss um, Miss Hayden requesting that additional twenty thousand um, dollar contribution all right what move we approve the request Mr. Turner do we have a second I'll second have a motion in a second any further discussion I will say we do have enough funds in the supplemental appropriations we can cover them with that part. Okay. Would it be on this budget or would it be on It'd this? Be a, this I prefer doing it out of this current budget. Okay. Any <coughs> other discussion? So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It sounds like it was unanimous. Thank you, sir. Report from the county attorney. Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything to report at this time. Can you tell us a thing? Nope. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Report from the county administrator and staff. I just have a few, a few quick items. If you'll turn to the front of your orange tab, there's a few things that I want to share. Um, reminder, next week is the board retreat, Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, 3 to 7, Thursday from about 9 till noon. And you have a draft agenda that um, Mr. Payne has put together um, following the, the conversations. I hope everybody was able to, uh, to talk to him and, and give him your honest feedback and, and um, give him some good, good takes to, to start his conversations off with on Wednesday. We'll have our, some of the department heads with us on Wednesday to help um, with, talk about some of their, their goals that they, have, they see for their departments. If you have any questions or thoughts as you look through the agenda, just let me know. Um, reminder again on Thursday, and you may remember uh, Ms. Kennelly, the board talked about the, um, the Civil War uh, uniform uh, unveiling. That's at 3.30, between 3.30 and 5.30 at the museum Thursday afternoon. Next Thursday, yeah, a week from today. Um, you guys received an email about the VACO Supervisors Forum coming in um, May 18th. If anybody's interested in going, um, just let us know. I think you have a, a copy of the agenda there behind the, the retreat agenda, just to give you an idea of what, what that includes. And then finally, on your, on your team, the board team, under the um, information folder, there's a spreadsheet of your uh, appointments you, you should have in your packet uh, printed out of your board specific um, uh, appointments, some of them to keep in mind that that might be coming up here soon, and the uh, the job descriptions themselves are on that in that um, teams folder and under information for each of those for the boards that we have information on. Uh, 
And that's all I have unless you have any questions. May I add to your... Please. I talked to Ms. DeVore right before our meeting here tonight. She had to go to another meeting. Uh, you know, they've been high on the museum, been high on that Civil War uniform that they had refurbished and looking for. Uh, the individual who gave them the uniform, I mean, that's an actual uniform, has now presented the museum with all the artifacts that they had collected that went with this uniform, which included the, the, the information, is, the paperwork where uh, Robert E. Lee signed for this guy that it, it owned, owned the uniform to be discharged from the Confederate Army. Uh, another sheet of paper signed by the President of the United States at that time, I think it was Johnson, to uh, reappropriate re him to the federal government. I mean, some of the documents they received are absolutely priceless. Mm -hmm. And the family presented to our museum with all those documents. Wow. So, uh, uh, they're, they're doing some things right now on a very small budget that's fantastic. Uh, but if you get a chance to go down there ne next Thursday, please go by. They're going to be having little snacks if you, if you want to, but uh, it'd be good to go in. I mean, it's interesting to go in and see what's in that museum. And so I, I just wanted to add that to it. That the information they have received is some museum would pay quite a sum to get some of those signatures. <laughs> Do we know if they got a uh, case or, or an enclosure for right now? They're, they're still looking. They're, I'm afraid they're going to have to build one. Yeah. I, I've looked myself and I, I've run across some things, but I don't know budgetarily what they're <coughs> really looking at. We thought we found one on Facebook or go, go, build, this, go build something. <coughs> and, uh, and already sold it, so we're, we're helping them look too. It, uh, but the uniform, uh, I was reported that the uniform is absolutely wonderful. The lady in Richmond who restored it, I mean, just did a wonderful, wonderful job. So, uh, and with that being said, you know, it costs quite a few pennies to get that done. We want to make sure that the museum has uh, facilities to take care of it. Yeah. But it's worth the trip down there if you get a chance. Um, having said that, I'll, any other, anything else? You know. Um, you want um, people to be appointed, we'll wait do it at a later time. Yeah, but you know, as far as your sheet goes, mm -hmm. I know you can't come off to there. That's just for your information. Okay. All right. Um, so we, you, we'll, wait, we'll wait to do it later. Okay. Probably send it to the appointment committee on it. Okay. My library person said they'd like to continue on the library board. You're welcome to go ahead and do an additional four-year term if you'd like tonight, if you're ready. Well, I'd uh, like to recommend Nellie Harmon to do an additional four-year term. I've talked to her. She said she would like to remain on the library board for four more years. I think it runs out this summer based on that sheet. No, second thing. Okay. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. <coughs> I believe she's on the board. Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to uh, put Kristen up for another term on the reappoint her okay. on the library committee. Second. I have a motion and a second to reappoint Kristen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. See what happens when you come in here? <laughs> Anybody else want to make an appointment right now? Okay. Yeah. I just have one last thing to say. I hope you all saw the piece in the uh, Sweet Cane News about the Manufacturing Excellence Program and the comments the students made. I think it, uh, I think alluded to that earlier in her speech. I think that's something that's really going to help the kids that are coming out of school. They're ready to go straight, want to go straight into the workforce. They can now tour and see all our present places of employment. And when they apply for the job, they've seen what they do, so they would genuinely know that they're interested in working there. So it's, it's not like driving by the outside and looking in and saying, hmm, I don't know what's going on there. 
but uh, Wolf Pack's a good place to work. They know what they pay, they know what to do, they see the jobs. So, uh, and our goal is up for those graduates who all have a job by graduation. Thanks a lot. So, thank you. That's all I have. All right, Mr. Rex. Um, yeah, thank you. My comments are, I guess, directed to Mr. Utt. Just want to give you a heads up. I received a phone call today. It's probably a cold call from a gentleman regarding Parks and Recs um, security. Said he'd spoke to somebody in Grayson County, so I deferred him to you. So tag, you're it. Okay. <laughs> um, I was completely caught off guard by his phone call, so I wasn't quite sure. In my mind, I couldn't place a park in Smith County that would possibly require a security network, but we don't know that. I don't, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, but um, the other question I have is more of a comment. I, when they started talking about the rail expansion from uh, the Amtrak all the way to Bristol and then on through to potentially Nashville or Knoxville, whatever, I was told they wouldn't stop the train in Marion because it was too close to the Roanoke station. Well, I read this morning that they're talking about putting a rail stop in Christiansburg. So I guess, again, I want to throw this on somebody else's plate to say if they're going to put it that close, Christiansburg to Roanoke, why I get our building is probably not up to specs, but could we explore that possibility to have a rail stop here? If not here, maybe in Chihuahua, maybe? Or just a, just a comment, really. I know in my experience from the past, the, the, the plan was Roanoke, get it to Christiansburg, and then get it to Bristol. Uh, the issue with getting it to Bristol is the time that a conductor is on that train from Washington to get down to Bristol is exceeds the Amtrak maximum. So they have to switch out at some point. Um, in order to, to keep the service going through, which is why they were trying to get from Chattanooga north. Um, so I think being able to come both directions to get to Bristol is, the, is my understanding of the current, uh, okay. the current plan. All right, well, it's more of a question, a general question, to say if they're going to put those two close together, why exclude uh, us? True. But, okay, thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Cole. Uh, thank you, sir. I'd like to... Uh, bring attention, if I can, board to our county administrator. We had a luncheon at the PDC, Mount Rogers Planning Commission this past week, and he received a pretty decent reward award from him. I'd like for him to explain what he got it for. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I was, um, I guess I was blessed to uh, been, receive the Mount Rogers Administrator of the of the Year uh, award uh, from the PDC. So I was trying to keep as as quiet and low key as possible, but Mr. Call was, wasn't going to make that happen. <laughs> I appreciate it. the award of excellence. It says, Mr. Chairman, and I agree with you. Do a good work, and all the girls does a good work. They take care of me. They're my, I call them my angels. <laughs> They tend to me with my ignorance on a lot of stuff. We have a great team. But I'm glad to see a crowd here tonight and heard a lot of good opinions and questions. And I like to see that continue, keep coming. Appreciate your armed service people for your services. Thank you for that. And everybody, be careful going home and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Billings. Uh, I'll just echo what Mr. Kyle said. Normally I've got a lot of rambling, but I'll ease it off tonight. I'll just echo what he said. Uh, I think we got a whole lot of good stuff going on, and uh, it's like one of the announcements that I was hoping Charlie would slip and make anyway, but uh, just know that they are a lot of good stuff coming. So we're, we're not privy to put it out there quite yet, but um, there's a lot of good stuff coming, and again, Sean, well-deserved, congratulations, and, and all your helpers there beside of you. I think it's just this end of the table that they feel like they have to take care of the special. <laughs> <laughs> she does a lot for me. Shut up. <laughs> one, of speakers, one of our speakers talked about an old person. Did y'all notice he looked directly at me? <laughs> I'm 
getting old. And well, here's a rebuttal from Mr. Wagner at the other end of the table now. <laughs> Well, I don't have a whole lot of questions. I just like to talk a lot. So, <laughs> but uh, again, I want to thank Ms. Hayden for. I guess she's already left again, just for her presentation. I just think it's so important that she gets that information out of uh, what she's doing and, and what's going on within the economic development community. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Mr. Cheney and Ms. Haynes for being here tonight. Um, <clears throat> I did. Myself and Mr. Billings actually stopped by and spoke with them a couple weeks ago. Uh, the the things that they offer for the community in in the Royal Oak District is uh, I don't I don't think very well known. You mentioned a lot of things uh, here tonight, and um, <clears throat> you know I I really appreciate everything they do. That building usually stays packed. With something going on and uh, you know I look at it as it, it's a multi-use facility in a lot of ways it's a community center it's you know uh, whatever anybody needs and like you said even if it's just a place uh, to keep someone safe that's had an emergency and, and, and put them up for the time being um, I, I commend you guys for that uh, with that being said upon the visit uh, there was some concerns over some things and Obviously, with uh, with them, as it is with anything, BFW, anybody, um, or any uh, nonprofit, there is there is things that come about that they may need some assistance with, and I don't know exactly what the opinion of this board would be, but I would like to. Uh, I have uh, spoke with them and just see to see what. Uh, maybe some costs would be just for some of the facilities to get them repaired um, and then maybe see if that's something we might be able to help them with in some way just because they give so much but they get very very little um, and there's been mentioned before about about some things with facilities from members here and also with the town council that I've uh, heard of that's been mentioned and, and I think it's just very important that we keep the you know the men and women who has served our country um, we, we're taking care of them and, and doing the best we can for them because again the services provided um, and, and even just the resource of going through them and getting these veterans it's the new ones coming in the new ones that's coming off of active duty or off of a deployment or anything like that getting these uh, veterans the information they need um, you know as far as even their disability benefits and, and things like that I, I just I would like to see us if we can try to help them in any way that we can so um, like I said I've spoke with uh, Mr. Cheney and Ms. Haynes and, and maybe that's something we could look at here in the near future as far as any kind of help we may be able to provide so that being said I, I thank everybody thank the staff again doing an amazing job and yes keep me on my toes so that phone rings a lot but that's okay so <laughs> thank you all have a good night so uh, I guess to follow Courtney here um, just rambling thoughts as I wrote them down here it's the way my brain works first thing I'd like to say is you know, it, it, it hits me every time we, we have a meeting, you know, we open with the pledge and a prayer. So to be part of an organization that still recognizes our country and Christ is does me well. There's a lot of places out there right now that they're, you know, they're, they're talking about how horrible a country is, and we've all got issues, but at least, you know, we're, we're, we're coming together as one to try to do what we can for our little small, you know, small part of the world. And then to still, you know, recognize God, and, uh, and, and, and that is just... Uh, you know, that's something else that's not popular today. So that, that strikes me as, uh, you know, something to be proud of. Um, echoing what uh, Kendra was talking about, you know, there's a lot there. And I've talked to, uh, you know, a lot of the people in my area, and I've told them when we talk about taxes, the, the county is not a revenue generating. We don't have stores, and we're not selling goods, and we're not doing that per se, but we are. This county is... We've got all these businesses. We've got people here that are doing stuff. And if we support the stuff in Smith County, yeah, 
your favorite chain restaurant might not be in Smith County. But we got a lot of good options here. We got a lot of good stores. And the dollars you spend, if you drive to Bristol to spend them, they circulate down there. If you go to Whitfield, they circulate there. So if you circulate your dollars in Smith County, that greatly affects what happens. Plus, that also affects the people that are looking. Why, why is exit seven now what it is? I remember when that was nothing. We all, if you're, you know, I'll be 47 this year. If you remember, you drove down through there with nothing, it was fields. But one store went in, dollars started circulating. And they, and they had friends and their friends came on. That's the adage we gotta have here. If you start, good things happen. It's just like talking about the, the car dealership going, you know, going off the exit there. People will see that. New shiny buildings, new shiny cars. <coughs> if people will buy local and support our community. It may not be whatever, but every time, you know, you know, you're buying online, every time you're doing that, those tax dollars do not circulate like they do if you go, you know, to Sugar Grove to the farmhouse market and get a sandwich. They're selling stuff over there too. Those people in those communities, they live here, support that. So like Charlie says, I'll get off my soapbox on that. But that's one of the things, and also a lot of the stuff she does, uh, you know, as one, I think Courtney said when she was talking, there's a lot of little gains and hurdles that nobody ever sees. So the time something actually gets announced, it's hard to tell how many hurdles or, you know, punch lists and check marks she's had to get to get to that. So there's a lot of things that happen. They take time. I mean, you know, we got a new business owner here in the in the galley tonight. And I think he's finally got his, you know, he's getting ready to hang his shingle, I guess that's what they call it or whatever. But it's taking him time. Got the shingle, just need a few more chairs. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, then we got the couch yesterday. Yeah, so, but it, but it, it just, little things add up and they finally get there. So, you know, I, I, as, as has been mentioned, there's lots of good things, you know, coming down the pipe. And then the other thing I would mention is, you know, it was mentioned about the School of Medicine. Yes, my son does attend that. And there is a lot of, I, hate to, I don't want to call them transient population, but what you see is first and second year students there are required to live here and attend school on campus. And then my son is getting ready to finish up his second year. They will basically take them out of the school setting and that's when they put them out into their field work. So he'll be going Bristol to Whitfield. A lot of those students though will go back to where they live. They'll go somewhere else to finish up the on the job training part of it. And then they'll have to come back here for a little bit to finish up the very end of that. So. What, as I've always told him and his thought as well is, my thought is, we have got those people for a short time. A lot of those are from, you know, they're from, uh, from the coastal area, they're from Northern Virginia, they're from other states. I'm just hoping that while they're here, what we can do is help them fall in love with this area like I have and want to live here my life. You know, there's a lot of people come here and they say, I love it. And then they move back away. Well, we've got these young, individuals, young professionals that are going to be, you know, it's a doctorate level program. I mean, we've got a, it's a value here. So if we can get those people and, you know, we're not going to get them all. They're going to go off and serve in larger areas and we don't have the need for 200 physical therapists and 200 occupational therapists. But if we can get one or two of them, you never know what that's going to do. So I, I've rambled long enough. Thank y'all. Y'all drive safe. All right. Thank you. And I don't know how I did it, but I'm last again this time. And it's like I, I, and I had nothing to do with it. We do it with the cards. So anyway, I'd like to first off thank uh, she's not here, but uh, Kendra did a fantastic job. And uh, one of the things I'd like to add is we're getting more publicity on the on the radio and on the TV stations. And I think it's partly because of the job she's doing to, to get the word out there. Um, I'm happy about that with our staff. I don't know, the public doesn't know this, but when we, we have a regional meeting where we have staff members there. Within a short period of time, our, our employees are some of the leaders in that regional program. And that speaks well for the people we've hired and the work that they're willing to put in. So I want to commend the staff for taking those responsibilities. Um, I want to thank this board for the support you're showing for 4-H because I, I, I'm 4-H is near and dear to my heart, both on the local level and at the 4-H center. There's a lot of, I don't know how to say this, a lot of animosity there that they're afraid if they ask for money from us for the center, we'll take it away from the local program or if the local program, you know, 
We've not sent any money to the center for several years. We used to give about five to $10,000 a year to support the center down there. And whether you know it or not, the 4-H center is not supported by the state. It is all local money, you know, where they raise and do this and do that. Uh, um, and the main goal is the summer camp for the kids. Everything else is nice, but the summer camp for the kids is the number one priority. And I think last year we had like 1,800 kids camp down there for the summer. That's a lot of people in southwest Virginia that got a chance to spend a week away from home that would, probably wouldn't have got it otherwise. So I'm, I'm giving my soapbox <laughs> plea here for the 4-H Center. Think, think about that, what it does for the kids. And the 4-H program in Smith County, Bailey has done a good job of rebuilding that program. When we come out of COVID, the camping program, we had several counties didn't have enough kids to camp and they had to combine counties. In other words, they'd have 50 from Wythe County, 50 from Smith County, and they'd have 100. Well, that hurt the 4-H center because we were set up for a 13-week camping of 200 kids from each county. Now, all of a sudden, we have two of those counties camping together, and they only had 100, 110 kids. So our revenue took a big drop. And like I said before, we get no state money. Virginia Tech pays for half of one position at, at the 4-H center. Everything else, the buildings, everything else is done through local support. So we uh, keep that in mind. And uh, finally, uh, people be safe going home tonight. The roads are slick. It'll be dark here in a few minutes, and the deer are out. So uh, be careful. And now we're going to go in. If I have a motion, we're going to go into a closed session. Thank you all for coming, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to enter into closed session of Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A1, Personnel Matters, Discussion, Consideration, and Interviews with Respective Candidates for Employment, Assignment, Appointment, Promotion, Performance, Demotion, Salaries, Disciplining, or Resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body regarding Mount Rogers Community Services appointment. And also A8, consultation with the council, employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counseling regarding the McClure also. That's the motion, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion to second go in closed session for those reasons. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, likewise. And we'd like to invite the interviewee.